So we have another doozy video for you today. I'm going to bring up on the computer here and I'm gonna share my screen with everybody. And we're gonna go over three different vans that I have pre-selected. I have a Transit, a Promaster, and a Sprinter. We're gonna do a price breakdown on why they cost what they cost or why they're listed at what they're listed at. And we're going to go over all of the specs and details on every van. And at the end, we are going to compare them to two professional companies. One is going to be a very known name brand and the other one is going to be a custom upfitter. So let's get into all those details. Here we go. So right now I am in my makeshift office. It is actually in my shop space. In my shop space, I'm not allowed to have like actual four walls, but I needed somewhere that I could get some work done and I needed it to be dust free. So I set up this tent where I could zip down if needed because I have my computer in here and I have my, my dog is in here. Makeshift office, here it is. But it's perfect because I got my little RC van and I have some great lighting. Luckily from Heart Tools, they are not sponsoring this video, but they are one of the sponsors that I do work a lot with. So battery powered lights that is able to give this great space some lighting. There it is right there, boom. Don't wanna make this a very lengthy video because I tend to talk about all tons of nonsense. So I'm gonna dump right into me sharing my screen with you guys and we're gonna get right into the vans and we're gonna talk a lot about them. So just like last time, I am going to be using Van Life Trader, public website that you can post on. There's a couple others out there that people like to post on uh, when they're trying to sell their van, but uh, Facebook Marketplace, RV Trader, uh, Conversion Trader, there's a whole bunch out there, but today, and like my other video that I've done about this, I use Van Life Trader. I like the people over Van Life Trader. I think the customer service is really good. I think their price point is good. They don't price out your van. No company prices out your van. That is up to you. Just like if you were to sell your home, you decide on the price. Maybe Van Life Trader should hire me to maybe do some like, be a realtor. Maybe I don't get commission, but I can work with people about pricing out their vans which is kind of why I'm doing this video here anyways. I'm trying to help everybody if they want to do sell or if they're looking to buy, they can turn to a video like this and they can understand the market a little bit better. The first one I'm gonna to go to here is a Ram Promaster. As you guys can see, I have my tabs open. This is a 2021 3500 159 extended high roof, 600 amp hours of lithium. That is the title. Just like the last video that I did about this, I'm going to go to the pictures later. We're gonna do a quick scroll and we're gonna actually just check this out. 36,000 miles. That is something obviously you need to just keep in mind throughout this whole process. It doesn't look like it is converted by a professional company. I could be wrong, I don't know, but from what I can see, it looks like it is a DIY build. We're probably gonna find out more uh, when we scroll through uh, throughout this, you know, ad listing. Camper features, has a rear air conditioner, indoor shower, toilet, outdoor shower, okay. Lithium 600 amp hours, that's a lot. We're gonna get into that. Let's see what happens here. Fully customized 2021 Promaster 159 Extended. This is a big van. High roof has, any, uh, has everything from a Dometic RTX. So right off the bat, I know that the RTX is a 12 volt air conditioning system. That's good. Runs fully off of DC power, right, 12 volt power. 600 amp hours of Battleborn, okay. Battleborn is a good battery. Is it? Is it the best? No, it is a good battery. Probably number four or five on my best battery list. Over the past six months, I've lived in this rig and while traveling with the United States. So there's gonna be a, a little wear and tear on it, but that's not a bad thing. It looks right here, it looks like they're, they're so they are asking 93 nines or 94,000. Comfort, wow, they've got it listed out really well here. Dometic RTX 200, like we've already said, the Max Air, great. Indoor shower even gives the dimensions of the shower pan. So it's six inch memory foam custom mattress, great, because it gives you the name of what it is. The bed can be converted into multiple ways, queen, setup, normal, sleeping side, great. Nature's head composting toilet. I'm just gonna say one little negative thing here. If I was to sell my rig, I probably wouldn't sell the composting toilet with it. That's just me. I'd probably buy a new one for the new owner or I would just take it out and say, have to provide your own toilet because I'm not selling you my used composting toilet. That's just me, which is probably why I went with the other toilets I went with when I did my vans. They're easy to switch out and they were way less expensive than a composting. If you wanna dump bleach all over it, that's up to you. 
I'm just saying, in my personal opinion, I probably wouldn't want to sell or buy someone's used composting. Let's see, large closet space, 22 inch TV, DC powered, that's cool. It looks like they got a lot of Victron components, that's great. We love a good Victron component stuff. The plumbing, we got 28 gallon Northwest Customs fresh water tank. Love Northwest Customs, they do great water tanks. I think he built his entire company doing water tanks. He does a great job. I had one of his first prototypes in my van way back when, so I think he does great work. Four gallon Bosch water heater. <laughs> Side note, uh, he also didn't put hot water heater, he put Bosch water heater. He just got a little points in my book. People give me a lot of crap for doing that, for saying, Hot water heater, it's just a water heater. Seven gallon gray tank, the SureFlow pumps, great. Inch and a half butcher block, this is a solid, solid build from what I can see. They listed everything out. Look at the extra, look at the exteriors. They got the KO2 all terrain. They got, they've got everything listed, I love it. Looks like a clean build, so far, so good. It looks good. I can't say negative things about it, other than it being a pro mast, <laughs> I'm kidding, but really. It looks like this person did some really good photos. A cabinet hardware is good. Exterior, you guys can see that there's really not much done on the exterior, but then again, you can't really do much on the exterior of a ProMaster. There are more and more companies coming out with more and more uh, great products for ProMasters. They do have bumpers, they do have lift kits, they do have racks, they do have rear mounted stuff. This person and other people can't really hike up the price on ProMasters, and that why, that's why ProMasters fully built out ones are typically less than what you see the sprinters and transits going for. Did notice this, this was an interesting, I, I like it. It's a, an interesting shower concept. You can see that the floor is a, is the pan and then this bops down into the shower. I actually did something similar like that on my second van. Maybe they watch me, I don't know. Either way, it's a cool idea. Okay, so I have one I have one thing I don't really like. The reason I don't like using a chest style fridge is which is what they used here. Uh, it's a design thing for me, which is it's a two motion thing to get to your fridge. You have to slide it out and then open it up. Is it a big deal? No. However, you're now cutting off your entire walkway just because of the fridge has to protrude out, right? So you have to be on one side or the other. Is it a big deal? No. Am I making a big deal out of it? Yes. It's just a personal thing that I personally wouldn't do. Do like their layout overall. They did a great job on it. There's your bed system that can come further out than what it already is. So now it becomes a massive bed if you wanted to. What is the price of this one again? I wanna say it's like 90, 93, 94,000. I actually think that this person is priced correctly. And I'm gonna give you guys a quick breakdown on where I feel this person is price correctly. How it's done, and I've talked about this before, is I take the blue book value of the van, you've got a ProMaster that I actually don't know what the pricing is because it is a 2021 with, what did I say, 26,000 miles, 36,000 miles, 36,000 miles on it. I actually didn't know the price of it, so I actually looked up used ProMasters, 3500s extended, which is this tab right here. As you can see that they are going for 49, use 8,000 miles, you know, use 48,000 miles, 48, for, you know, 49,000. This obviously depends on where you are. This is probably around where I am. Right there, if I was to do a comp in price of a 3,500 Ram ProMaster Extended, you're looking around 45,000. This person has a lot of, you know, invested into it. Now it does have six months wear and tear. And I just realized something, there is no heater in here. They do not have a heater. So it's a little bit of a price drop. Okay, but not a big deal. They've got the air conditioning taken care of, and I just realized why it doesn't have the heater. They spent the last six months in this. We are, I am filming this in November. I am watching this in November. They've listed in November. They haven't gone through a winter yet. For someone to purchase this right now, you'd have to probably install a heater. Now you might be like, oh, I don't really need a heater. Well, 40 degrees is 40 degrees. Sleeping at 40 degrees is kind of uncomfortable. You can layer up, you can put blankets on, sure, that's fine. Either have somebody install it and you can go top end of you know 6,000 if you have it professionally installed. You install it yourself, top end is 3,500 maybe, give or take. Or you could go low end, Chinese diesel heater, couple hundred bucks. Or you can go with a planar heater, about $1,000. $45,000 for the van itself. They've got a lot of product in there. They've got about 30 grand worth of product in there. Maybe a little bit less, maybe 25. I didn't really get a good look at like quality, but it is a DIY van build. So I'm not going to rag on them that much because it's hard to do this. So they did a good job. I could see a little bit right there. It's not that big a deal. Like carpenters are gonna get after that person. Okay, right there, there's a little bit right there. So the quality is so-so. You're not gonna get 
top quality if you went to a DIY builder or a backyard builder, but that's okay. He's asking 94,000. So the van itself empty, you're looking at, like I said, 40 to 50 grand. They've got about 20 into this. Six months of wear and tear, not so bad. And then obviously the labor that they put into this. So my formula is usually the cost, the blue book value of the van itself, what they've put into it, and then you match that number with your labor. Now they've got a six months wear and tear on this, like I said, so 40 to 50, we'll call it 45, plus another 20 to 30, we'll call that 25, so, so that's about 70. They're asking 94, so another 25. So you're right around what they are asking for this. 95, according to my numbers, is what they're asking. Obviously, as somebody that is selling, you're going to price high so you have room to negotiate. You're not gonna start around 85 because maybe 85 is that person's low number. So this is a perfect example of somebody that is priced correctly. Let's go into somebody that maybe not be priced correctly because that's the funnest stuff to do, right? 2020 Luxury Remote Work Stealth Sprinter 174 by four. Okay, I know, it's sales taxes, words, I get it, it's cool. Stealth, you're talking to a stealth guy, so this better freaking impress me. 26,000 miles on a used four x four Sprinter, great, not a big deal, they, that's broken in. 600 amp hours of lithium, okay. Designed for spacious full-time living remote work with multiple stations. Four by four, four wheel drive, that's what four wheel, okay. Rare features. Mercedes is no longer four by four sprinters. They're not making them. That is actually true. They're, that is that they're, they're, that is true. Custom built by Kraft Auto Works in Reno. I didn't know this. I didn't know that it was a professional van. I don't know who Kraft Auto Works is, but let's see how good of work they do. They probably do good work, guys. I'm not, I'm not dogging them. Work remote without hip and back pain because they have a sitting and standing desk. Okay. Never pay for hotels again. Stealth mode. You keep on promoting stealth. Yeah, you have a four x four Sprinter. The four x four Sprinters are supposed to be going off-road and rugged, right? That's what I thought a four x four Sprinter was. And the four x fours can also mean, you know, deep snow, rough weather. So maybe in that regard, but you keep on promoting stealth, but you also promoting four x four Sprinter. So pick, pick a lane, in my opinion, just pick a lane. You can park anywhere overnight as long as nobody bothers you. That's, that goes for anything but that's just me. Large battery bank, you are true. There, There is a large battery bank. You get 600 amp hours of lithium battery, so yes. I don't, I don't like that they're not listing everything. Say what type of system it is. Is it Victron? Is it Renergy? Is it some other brand that I don't even know of? Is it, is it Masterbolt? Is it, what, what brands? What are you using here? Say what you have here. You don't have to say what water tank you have. 22 gallon, that's fine, but you don't have water heater for hot water. Okay, say what the hot water heater is. <laughs> I just did it. Fridge with a freezer option, butcher ball countertops, 22 gallon gray water tank with electric. Electric what? Long bench, 74 by 21 with cozy flat bench cushions. Bench doubles as a spare bed. I guess any long bench that's 74 inches long would do that. Air conditioner, what type of air conditioner? I need to know this. The bed is six foot long or four and a half inch wide, so 54 inches wide, so that's a full six, so it's a short full. Discrete flares, discrete flares in a stealth vehicle. Okay, the person that listed this, you're the one that's all about the stealth, so that's why I'm pointing that out. I'm gonna call you out on stealth if that's your thing. Ah, oh, details, here we go. So these are where all the details are. So you do have flares that are done by flare space. Cool, Baltic Birch, 3M Thinsulate. Okay, so you have some good insulation. Custom CMC with Formica, cool. Nomadic cooling 12 volts. Okay, now I know the air conditioning is at least a 12 volt air conditioning, so that's cool. Dometic Hecky Sunlights, those are, or Skylights, excuse me. Battleborne batteries, short on the Magnum Inverter, okay. And the Bosch water heater, great. Now, now we're talking. Is it worth the 990 grand that you're asking for it? Here's the problem with this. This sounds like it is a personal sell. However, it was a custom build by a company. Therefore, the company charged this person a boatload of money because that's what they do and that's fine. But now you're trying to sell it. So you're trying to recoup the money that you've spent. That is a small issue, but it's not the biggest issue. Are you also trying to capitalize on the inflated market right now? Although we are entering, a, obviously, the deflation of the market, right? I can't tell if the interior is pink or white. Maybe it's just my eyes. I can't really tell. The lighting, it's, it's, it's a warm light from what I understand, but it looks like it's a white. From Micah, so I'm assuming that's a white from Micah with Baltic Birch, okay. 
I don't know if the cabinetry is from Van Made Gear. It looks like it might be. It's just, if it was from Van Made Gear, then it's not so custom. And I already know that the cabinetry was CNC cut out because that's what they said in their, their ad posting. But Van Made Gear does a flat ship where they kind of send it to you and it's a kit and you kind of just put it together. It's not that it's a problem. I would just like for them to disclose that information if it is Van Made Gear, it's probably not. No, I don't think it is. Sort of kind of like copied Van Made Gear, but it's not, it's not a problem. So they talked about cushions in a bench, but they don't show any cushions on this long 74 inch bench. Uh, also the door right here is not insulated. You can see that right there. These are all panels. And it looks like they're all either riveted in of some sort. It, it's an aesthetic. And it looks like it has like some sort of fabric on the wall. That's fine. See the back doors as well. They are not insulated. I mean, the, ca the cabinetry is really good because it's Baltic birch. I mean, the aesthetics look good. The ceiling looks good. The electrical looks good. Insulation is slacking a little bit. I don't think it's as stealth as what this person is claiming it to be. Outdoor shower, cool. The reason why I don't think it's stealth, I'm gonna open this picture right here. It kind of looks like a dog like washing station, right? Like a dog washing company. And if you had that signage, I guess that would be super stealth. But I'm gonna throw up a couple images of my two vans that I did, my two high top vans. I did a third van that was a low top that was sort of stealthy, but not that stealthy. And then, uh, but my first two were stealth. I claim to be stealth. My vans were ghost, the ground home, operation stealth, transportation. Again, these are my two vans from the outside and you guys can tell me if they are more stealth than this. My second one even has windows and I still feel like it was pretty darn stealthy. I lived on the streets of Los Angeles, Portland, Oregon, San Diego, and I traveled in other to other cities, but those were the three major cities that I lived in a long time in. For me, the two Dometic Heckies with the RTX uh, air conditioning unit are a dead giveaway, but for most, it's not a dead giveaway. And the flares, the flares to me obviously stick out like a sore thumb. If you're going to be stealthy, then you need to make your outside look, you know, not that obvious. Okay, enough about the stealth. Going back to the problem, the real problem at hand here, which would be the price. We're looking at 190,000. I hate to say this to this person. I'm sorry, your van is not worth 190,000. It's a 174 by four, great. It's a used 174 by four. Brand new, out the door, you're looking at 70, 75,000, depending on the state. You're slightly used, so you're slightly less. Already driven off the lot, got some miles on there. You're already at 60 to 65,000, sorry. I don't even know if you had a heater in here. I think you did. You did have a heater because I just looked, but so you have a heater, air conditioner, um, great. You have an S bar heater, by the way. That was, that's a good heater. The air conditioner is a good heater. You've got a good electrical system. 60 to 65,000 on the van. You've got maybe $50,000 worth of products. Now it was professionally built, so they have their labor onto that. That's about 100 to 110,000 materials and van itself. Professionally built. If I was getting it professionally built by them, and it was my design and my layout, yeah, they, their labor is probably worth the 80 grand that you're asking for, but this is secondhand. So I feel at best, you're gonna get maybe a 140, 150 for this. And that's being somewhat generous to be quite honest with you. And I hate to say that to you, but the van itself is beautiful. The, the aesthetics, the layout, the, the systems, the components, all of that is really well done. So. So you have a really nice van here. You just might have to price drop that just a little bit, in my opinion. These are just my opinions, guys, I'm sorry. All right, I gotta move through these quicker because I wanna get through the rest of them, but the Ford Transit, I did already open this one up and this is a custom van builder that says it right there, Mark's Custom Vans, Mark with a Z, or Mars, Mars Custom Vans, excuse me. I like how they listed it uh, compared to the last person and then the first person listed it really well. This is an all-wheel drive Transit something to keep in mind. It is brand spanking new. We got a two burner electric cooktop. They've got the power for flatline van coat. Guys, look at this. They have exterior stuff written out. They have the company listed out. Lion Energy Batteries, Victron, Victron, Victron. Boom, boom, boom. Love it. 139, so 140,000. I love people when they do 139,999. We're not fooling anybody, okay? Just say 140. I know, it's a sales tactic. My computer isn't you know, the problem, these, these photos are very pixelated. Mars, please update your camera. What I can do here is I can actually click on the company and go to your page. Now these are nice photos. They are not pixelated. And Mars, you do good work. 
Okay, this is one thing I'm going to point out, Mars, I don't like, but this is, again, not, this is, some people like it and they're okay with it. I personally don't like the openness of the water system and the electrical system. I like to have them more boxed in. Some people like the way that you have it. Some people like the way that I like it. Tomato, tomato, whatever. Look at how clean that electrical system is. Look at how clean that water system is. Very well done, in my opinion. Woodworking is really nicely done. Uh, okay, so Mars, you do have a good product here. This was in a Transit. The reason I have a Transit, a ProMaster, and a Sprinter is because I'm trying to get, uh, on my last video, people were saying, do more ProMasters, do more other vehicles other than Sprinters, because the last video I did was two Sprinters. My point is, is it doesn't matter because of my formula. It doesn't matter what the vehicle is. You can look up the cost of the vehicle by just doing a quick search on it. I have it up here. All I typed in was ProMaster, Ram ProMaster 3500, and that came up, and a bunch of used cars came up, and you can understand the market a little bit better of what they're going for. Just quickly, going back to Mars's asking price, 140. I actually do think it's worth that. Um, it's, again, professionally built. There are such things as backyard builders, which I don't, or maybe startup van builders. I don't know Mars, I have no idea who they are, but it's maybe they're a startup van builder, might be. An all wheel drive transit, what are those brand new? Like they've gotta be the same as four x four Sprinter, so 65, 70,000, okay. No outside components really, but other than the awning and the roof rack, they've got like at least 40, 50 grand into that thing. So yeah, you're only making profit. That is priced really good, I think. 140 for a 2022 all-wheel drive transit yeah that's priced accordingly i went through that really quickly but i wanted to get to the rebel the rebel and then i've got a special one for you guys at the end here the rebel is asking 162 again what does that look like what does that picture look like that looks like that other person's uh that 144 uh sprinter right for four by four this Rebel, I believe all Rebels are 4x4. I could be wrong, though. I don't know. I don't know. The price decreased recently. $54,000? You were asking over, over $200 for a Rebel? Brand new Rebels go for about $200. But you decreased fifty four grand recently? Doesn't say if it's 4x4 or not. This is on some website that I don't... Oh, it's on RV Trader. RV, RV Trader is just another company, but I'm shocked that they don't have view dealers. I, I can view the dealership, but I don't want to view. I want to know if it's 4x4 or not. Sorry, RV Trader, but I'm I'm liking I'm liking uh, Van Life Trader a little bit more right now because they made it a lot more clear to me. I think all Rebels are 4x4, but I could be wrong. The Rebels are a run-of-the-mill RV that is a production-made RV. Do I feel that it is worth the price? My opinion, no. 162 actually might be worth the price. For the 190 they're usually getting? No, I don't think it is. What you are getting with the Rebels or any Winnebago is like warranties and you can also take it into any, pretty much everywhere that works on RVs because they're so well, like widely known. I would rather go with, if I was gonna spend that kind of money, I'd rather go with a company like this company. They didn't ask me to do this. This is Benchmark Vehicles. This is one of their 4x4 170s. This has everything. This has a CA Tune bumper right there. You can see it with a winch. This is probably around 250,000 as my guess. On the outside alone, they've got 40 grand. Easy. CA Tune bumper, Rome built roof rack. They've got the shocks. They've got, look at that. That's a Linex bumper. They've got an awning. They've got the, I think they've got the Rome built that's a Rome built rack, I believe, because they've got the Rome built uh, uh, foot guards or whatever they're called. Look at the interior, clean. The difference between like a benchmark, Overland van project, outside van, Nomadic Customs is like, like custom to the roof. Those are like my friends that I'm friends with on the West Coast. You've got other builders like Boulder Camper Vans out in Boulder, Colorado. Those companies, and benchmark the reason why how they're different than the rebels the rebels is because they use more custom fabrications than a rebel which is more like off of an assembly line those companies i just named might use a cnc machines actually some of them don't like nomadic customs you know hand cut on a table saw but the difference between like this cnc is also laid up with like well i know they use a like a fenix 
they also use like the the Raleigh bed system like I don't think like Winnebago is using that I'm not trying to rag on Winnebago but look at the custom lighting is way different Agile the rip kit packer which is the ride improvement package that alone is like 10 grand this is a 4x4 adventure vehicle plain and simple the cabinetry is top top notch the guzzle h2o really good water filtration system uh van life tech heating uh the best heater on the market in my opinion not a wabasto or an s-bar van life tech it's a hydronic system any hydronic system is going to completely squash a forced air system simply that's simply put also hydronic systems also they can also control your hot your your water being hot your hot water this is a quarter million dollar van that is worth a quarter million dollars i'm going to end it here and thank you guys so much for tuning into this video if you guys are interested in other vlogs i do come out with vlogs on every sunday whether it's a vlog like this which is tachi talks or I also do uh, some vlogging about my tiny house build that I'm currently building right now. It is in the very beginning stages, so there's going to be a lot of custom everything in there. It's gonna be completely off-grid capable, 48 volt battery system. The thing is going to be ridiculous. Obviously, I'm probably gonna do another van in the future. I'm also probably gonna do another four x four like overlanding rig. Stay tuned for all of those things, including my land purchase coming up hopefully by the end of the year. If not, it'll be early next year. So stay tuned for all of those, as well as the tours that I give, because I love showing off other people. See you guys next time. Later.